Good morning. Welcome back to St. Paul Lutheran Church in Unionville, Michigan, on this Friday, the 2nd of June in the year of our Lord, 2023. I'm glad you can join us as we begin our day at the end of this week with God's Word in prayer. This is now week 22, day 5 of reading through the Old Testament in 2023, and that brings us to 1 Kings chapters 14 through 16. Uh, getting closer and closer to that week 26 that would mark the halfway point. That's it's amazing how quickly that's that's moving along. At any rate, uh, just to kind of reiterate where we're at, uh, we've been reading about King Solomon and his reign. Mainly, what was described about him, of course, was the uh, was his building of his palace and the temple, and then the prosperity of the land under his rule. Not much about the military engagements that, that he was involved with, um, couple, although a couple of uh, his enemies that uh, raided the land, for example, were mentioned. But at any rate, uh, when he died, of course, because in his later years, he began to worship, not only to allow the worship of other gods, but to actually worship himself other gods, or he himself worshipped other gods. He didn't worship himself as a god. Uh, you know what I mean. Uh, because of that, God punished him by taking the northern ten tribes away from Solomon's son Rehoboam. Uh, and they are now, at this point, as we, as we pick up the story, uh, they are now the kingdom of Israel and Solomon's heir, Solomon's son, is ruling over the southern kingdom of Judah. And so that's where we're at. Uh, Jeroboam is king of the northern kingdom, and although God had promised that if he continued to worship God, if he continued to put his trust in God, God would establish his family as rulers over that northern kingdom, much like he had promised David in the southern kingdom. But of course, Jeroboam he didn't trust in God as he should have, and instead he set up the worship of a, a God he invented at a couple of places in the northern kingdom uh, so that people weren't drawn away after, uh, after uh, the, they weren't drawn away to the, the kings of David, the, the kings of the line of David, because they continued to worship there in Jerusalem. Uh, and so now we'll see, we'll see how that plays out for Jeroboam. Uh, not well, of course. At the end of the reading yesterday, we heard God's judgment against him, and, and now we'll see it begin to take place. Uh, let me no note as well that uh, this uh, today's devotion is pre-recorded because I'm not sure exactly what time I'll be getting back from. Uh, from the closing chapel service in Seaboring this morning. So, um, unfortunately, we cannot invite you to add additional prayer requests, but if you have any, please feel free to pass them along to me personally, uh, and, we'll and we'll be happy to include them either next week or on Sunday during our regular prayers. All right. I think we are all set. Everything's working as it should. Okay. 1 Kings chapters 14 through 16. At that time Abijah the son of Jeroboam fell sick. And Jeroboam said to his wife, Arise and disguise yourself, that it not be known that you are the wife of Jeroboam, and go to Shiloh. Behold, Ahijah the prophet is there, who said of me that I should be king over this people. Take with you ten loaves, some cakes, and a jar of honey, and go to him. He will tell you what shall happen to the child. Jeroboam's wife did so. She arose and went to Shiloh, and came to the house of Ahijah. Now Ahijah could not see, for his eyes were dim because of his age. And the Lord said to Ahijah, Behold, the wife of Jeroboam is coming to inquire of you concerning her son, for he is sick. Thus and thus shall you say to her. 
When she came, she pretended to be another woman. But when Ahijah heard the sound of her feet as she came in at the door, he said, Come in, wife of Jeroboam. Why do you pretend to be another? For I am charged with unbearable news for you. Go, tell Jeroboam, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Because I exalted you from among the people, and made you leader over my people Israel, and tore the kingdom away from the house of David, and gave it to you, and yet you have not been like my servant David, who kept my commandments, and followed me with all his heart, doing only that which was right in my eyes. But you have done evil above all who were before you, and have gone and made for yourself other gods and metal images, provoking me to anger, and have cast me behind your back. Therefore, behold, I will bring harm upon the house of Jeroboam, and will cut off from Jeroboam every male, both bond and free in Israel, and will burn up the house of Jeroboam as a, mer as a man burns up dung until it is all gone. Anyone belonging to Jeroboam who dies in the city, the dogs shall eat. And anyone who dies in the open country, the birds of the heavens shall eat. For the Lord has spoken it. Arise, therefore, go to your house. When your feet enter the city, the child shall die. And all Israel shall mourn for him and bury him, for he only of Jeroboam shall come to the grave, because in him there is found something pleasing to the Lord, the God of Israel, in the house of Jeroboam. Moreover, the Lord will raise up for himself a king over Israel, who shall cut off the house of Jeroboam today. And henceforth, the Lord will strike Israel as a reed is shaken in the water, and root up Israel out of this good land that he gave to their fathers, and scatter them beyond the Euphrates, because they have made their Asherim, provoking the Lord to anger. And he will give Israel up because of the sins of Jeroboam, which he sinned, and made Israel to sin. Then Jeroboam's wife arose and departed, and came to Terza, and as she came to the threshold of the house, the child died. And all Israel buried him, and mourned for him, according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke by his servant Ahijah the prophet. Now the rest of the acts of Jeroboam, how he warred, and how he reigned, behold, they are written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Israel. And the time that Jeroboam reigned was twenty-two years. And he slept with his fathers, and Nadab his son reigned in his place. Now Rehoboam the son of Solomon reigned in Judah. Rehoboam was forty-one years old when he began to reign, and he reigned seventeen years in Jerusalem, the city that the Lord had chosen out of all the tribes of Israel, to put his name there. His mother's name was Nama the Ammonite. And Judah did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, and they provoked him to jealousy with their sins that they committed, more than all that their fathers had done. For they also built for themselves high places and pillars and ashram on every high hill and under every green tree, and there were also male cult prostitutes in the land. They did according to all the abominations of the nations that the Lord drove out before the people of Israel. In the fifth year of King Rehoboam, Shishak, king of Egypt, came up against Jerusalem. He took away the treasures of the house of the Lord and the treasures of the king's house. He took away everything. He also took away all the shields of gold that Solomon had made. And King Rehoboam made in their place shields of bronze and committed them to the hands of the officers of the guard who kept the door of the king's house. And as often as the king went into the house of the Lord, the guard carried them and brought them back to the guard room. Now the rest of the acts of Rehoboam and all that he did are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Judah? 
And there was war between Rehoboam and Jeroboam continually. And Rehoboam slept with his fathers and was buried with his fathers in the city of David. His mother's name was Nama the Ammonite. And Abijam his son reigned in his place. Now in the eighteenth year of King Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, Abijam began to reign over Judah. He reigned for three years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Makkah, the daughter of Abishalom. And he walked in all the sins that his father did before him. And his heart was not wholly true to the Lord his God, as the heart of, his Dave, of David his father. Nevertheless, for David's sake, the Lord his God gave him a lamp in Jerusalem, setting up his son after him, and establishing Jerusalem, because David did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, and did not turn aside from anything that he commanded him all the days of his life, except in the matter of Uriah the Hittite. Now there was war between Rehoboam and Jeroboam all the days of his life, the rest of the acts of Abijam and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Judah? And there was war between Abijam and Jeroboam. And Abijam slept with his fathers, and they buried him in the city of David. And Asa his son reigned in his place. In the twentieth year of Jeroboam king of Israel, Asa began to reign over Judah, and he reigned forty-one years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Makkah, the daughter of Abishalom. And Asa did what it was right in the eyes of the Lord, as David his father had done. He put away the male cult prostitutes out of the land, and removed all the idols that his fathers had made. He also removed Makkah, his mother, from being queen mother, because she had made an abominable image for Asherah. And Asa cut down her image and burned it at the brook Kidron. But the high places were not taken away. Nevertheless, the heart of Asa was wholly true to the Lord all his days. And he brought into the house of the Lord the sacred gifts of his father and his own sacred gifts, silver and gold, and vessels. And there was war between Asa and Baasha, king of Israel, all their days. Baasha, king of Israel, went up against Judah and built Ramah, that he might permit no one to go out or come in to Asa, king of Judah. Then Asa took all the silver and the gold that were left in the treasures of the house of the Lord and the treasures of the king's house and gave them into the hands of his servants. And King Asa sent them to Ben-Hadad, the son of Tabramon, the son of Hezion, king of Syria, who lived in Damascus, saying, Let there be a covenant between me and you, as there was between my father and your father. Behold, I am sending to you a present of silver and gold. Go, break your covenant with Baasa, king of Israel, that he may withdraw from me. And Ben-Hadad listened to King Asa and sent the commanders of his armies against the cities of Israel and conquered Ijan, Dan, Abel Beth Makkah, and all Chinneroth with all the land of Naphtali. And when Baasha heard of it, he stopped building Ramah, and he lived in Terza. Then King Asa made a proclamation to all Judah, none was exempt, and they carried away the stones of Ramah and its timber, with which Baasha had been building. And with them King Asa built Geba of Benjamin and Mizpah. Now the rest of all the acts of Asa, all his might and all that he did, and the cities that he built, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Judah? But in his old age he was diseased in his feet. And Asa slept with his fathers, and was buried with his fathers in the city of David his father. And Jehoshaphat his son reigned in his place. 
Nadab, the son of Jeroboam, began to reign over Israel in the second year of Asa, king of Judah, and he reigned over Israel two years. He did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, and walked in the way of his father, and in his sin which he made Israel to sin. Baasha, the son of Ahijah of the house of Issachar, conspired against him, and Baasha struck him down at Gibbethon, which belonged to the Philistines, for Nadab and all Israel were laying siege to Gibbethon. So Baasha killed him in the third year of Asa, king of Judah, and reigned in his place. And as soon as he was king, he killed all the house of Jeroboam. He left to the house of Jeroboam not one that breathed until he had destroyed it, according to the word of the Lord that he spoke by his servant Ahijah the Shilonite. It was for the sins of Jeroboam that he sinned, and that he made Israel to sin, and because of the anger to which he provoked the Lord, the God of Israel. Now the rest of the acts of Nadab and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Israel? And there was war between Asa and Baasha king of Israel all their days. In the third year of Asa king of Judah, Baasha the son of Ahijah began to reign over all Israel at Tirzah, and he reigned twenty-four years. He did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, and walked in the way of Jeroboam, and in his sin which he made Israel to sin. And the word of the Lord came to Jehu the son of Hanani against Baasha, saying, Since I exalted you out of the dust and made you leader over my people Israel, and you have walked in the way of Jeroboam, and have made my people Israel to sin, provoking me to anger with their sins, behold, I will utterly sweep away Baasha and his house, and I will make your house like the house of Jeroboam the son of Nebat. Anyone belonging to Baasha who dies in the city, the dogs shall eat, and any one of his who dies in the field, the birds of the heavens shall eat. Now the rest of the acts of Baasha and what he did, and his might, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel? And Baasha slept with his fathers and was buried at Terzah, and Elah his son reigned in his place. Moreover, the word of the Lord came by the prophet Jehu, the son of Hanani, against Baasha and his house, both because of all the evil that he did in the sight of the Lord, provoking him to anger with the work of his hands, in being like the house of Jeroboam, and also because he destroyed it. In the twenty-sixth year of Asa, king of Judah, Elah, the son of Baasha, began to reign over Israel in Terzah, and he reigned two years. But his servant Zimri, commander of half his chariots, conspired against him. When he was at Terzah, drinking himself drunk in the house of Arza, who was over the household in Terzah, Zimri came in and struck him down and killed him in the twenty-seventh year of Asa, king of Judah, and reigned in his place. When he began to reign, as soon as he had seated himself on his throne, he struck down all the house of Baasha. He did not leave him a single male of his relatives or his friends. Thus Zimri destroyed all the house of Baasha, according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke against Baasha by Jehu the prophet. For all the sins of Baasha and the sins of Elah his son, which they sinned, and which they made Israel to sin, provoking the Lord God of Israel to anger with their idols. Now the rest of the acts of Elah and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel? In the twenty-seventh year of Asa king of Judah, Zimri reigned seven days in Terzah. Now the troops were encamped against Gibbethon, which belonged to the Philistines, and the troops who were encamped, heard it, and said, Zimri has conspired, and he has killed the king. 
Therefore all Israel made Omri, the commander of the army, king over Israel that day in the camp. So Omri went up from Gibbethon and all Israel with him, and they besieged Tirzah. And when Zimri saw that the city was taken, he went into the citadel of the king's house and burned the king's house over him with fire and died because of his sins that he committed, doing evil in the sight of the Lord, walking in the way of Jeroboam, and for his sin which he committed, making Israel to sin. Now the rest of the acts of Zimri and the conspiracy that he made, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Israel? Then the people of Israel were divided into two parts. Half of the people followed Tibni, the son of Ginath, to make him king, and half followed Omri. But the people who followed Omri overcame the people who followed Tibni, the son of Ganath. So Tibni died, and Omri became king. In the thirty-first year of Asa, king of Judah, Omri began to reign over Israel, and he reigned for twelve years. Six years he reigned in Tirzah. He bought the hill of Samaria from Shemer from, for two talents of silver, and he fortified the hill and called the name of the city that he built Samaria, after the name of Shemer, the owner of the hill. Omri did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, and did more evil than all who were before him. For he walked in, the, in all the way of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, and in the sins that he made Israel to sin, provoking the Lord, the God of Israel, to anger by their idols. Now the rest of the acts of Omri that he did, and the might that he showed, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel? And Omri slept with his fathers, and was buried in Samaria, and Ahab his son reigned in his place. In the thirty-eighth year of Asa king of Judah, Ahab the son of Omri began to reign over Israel, and Ahab the son of Omri reigned over Israel in Samaria twenty-two years. And Ahab the son of Omri did evil in the sight of the Lord, more than all who were before him. And as if it had been a light thing for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, he took for his wife Jezebel, the daughter of Ethbaal, king of the Sidonians, and went and served Baal and worshipped him. He erected an altar for Baal in the house of Baal, which he built in Samaria, and Ahab made an Asherah. Ahab did more to provoke the Lord, the God of Israel, to anger, than all the kings of Israel who were before him. In his days, Heel of Bethel built Jericho. He laid its foundation at the cost of Abiram his firstborn, and set up its gates at the cost of his youngest son, Sagub, according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke by Joshua, the son of Nun. Thus far, 1 Kings, chapters 14 through 16. Sorry for the scrolling. Okay, did you follow all that? A little bit of a longer reading. But it is interesting to see how quickly the northern kingdom went astray. And not only did they go astray, but they quickly went from bad to worse to worse and to worse still. Sin was compounded against sin, and sin was further compounded again against sin. Or should I say upon sin. Uh, we see here uh, the phenomenon that we've commented on in other contexts, and that is the hardening of the human heart. You know, we all have a conscience. God has written his law on our hearts. That was the very first way that he gave his law, the law that we know as the Ten Commandments. It was first given to Adam and Eve by writing it on their hearts.
from the very beginning, we've had a natural sense of right and wrong. But as soon as they fell into sin, that understanding was corrupted. We don't understand God's word as at God's law as we should. And we certainly are not able to keep it as we should. But in addition to that, as our consciences become desensitized to sin, it becomes harder and harder to turn back to God in repentance, and it becomes easier and easier and easier to go further and further into sin. And that's how people and groups of people can end up in the most deplorable acts. Even, as we'll see later on, literally sacrificing their own children to false gods like Molech. It, it really is a great testimony to our depravity, or the depravity of the human heart, at least what we're capable of, to see, uh, to see the progression here. And still, God continues to call them back to him. It is only when they get to the full extreme of their wickedness that he finally brings judgment. As long as there still is hope for calling them back to him in repentance, as long as there still is hope of turning them to put their trust in him once again, he stays his hand. And as we've said on other occasions, even in his punishment, he is very faithful, never giving in to the desire to simply destroy everyone, but always using it to call people to repentance and faith. Here we see God's justice and his mercy in a way that is only superseded, it's only, we only see it more clearly on the cross as Jesus himself suffered and died to pay for the sins of, of all people, including Jeroboam, including his successors, paying for all of their sins in full, so that that call to repentance was a genuine call of love and concern and a desire to gather his people back to him. So here too we see God carrying out his plan of salvation in real time, in real places, among real people, through real events, and pointing to what he's done for you in Jesus Christ. Okay, again, this is pre-recorded, so we're not able to invite you to submit additional prayer requests, but uh, feel free, if you have a, an additional prayer requ request, please do feel free to, uh, to reach out to me uh, individually, and we'll be happy to include them in the future. But in the meantime, we'll continue with the prayers we have. Let's pray. Holy Father, we pray that you would continue to bless the preaching of your cross to all nations. That message does call us to repent. It points out how far we have strayed from your will, how far we've strayed from what you intended for us to have, how you intended for us to live in this world. And it also confronts us with the reality of how hard our hearts can become. Open our eyes there to see, to see the full weight, the full guilt of our sin in all that Jesus suffered, knowing that what we see is only a dim reflection of what we truly owed. Only a only a, a small part of what he suffered and died for us. Help us to see as well your love and your compassion there. Help us to see the completed work of making us your children, of making us new creatures, of earning for us a place as favored children in your household and giving us an eternal inheritance in his kingdom that has no end. 
continue to bless and pro prosper the preaching of the cross, both here among us and around the world, so that all might be turned back to you. We also pray for your grace and strength for the persecuted and the oppressed. Watch over and protect them where they are in danger, where they are suffering. Uh, heal them and relieve their pain and restore what has been lost. Especially for those who are suffering and persecuted for their faith in Jesus Christ, strengthen them through it all so that nothing can turn them away from you. We also pray that you would bring justice and peace in this world. Open our hearts and our eyes to see those who are oppressed, those who suffer injustice of all different kinds, so that we might care for them and show godly love to them and serve you by serving them. Grant us wisdom to try to make this world more just, uh, even as we wait for your kingdom and your perfect righteousness. Father, Father, on this day when your Son, Jesus Christ, felt the weakness and death that he suffered on the cross, we pray that you would watch over Cordy and Russ, Betty and Richard, Jim and Edith and Stephanie, and all those battling chronic conditions. Give them today that strength that they need to face their weakness, to face their illness, to face their pain. Continue to encourage them and assure them of your presence and your love and your grace for them and toward them. Assure them that nothing has changed your feeling toward them and that you are still hard at work carrying out your plan of salvation for them. Pray for your healing for Libby and Sherry and Lily and all those who are ill and undergoing treatment. Again, we pray that you would be with them every step of the way as they seek a diagnosis and treatment, as they go through that, as they come through it and begin their recoveries. Give them strength and confidence in their time of great need. Give them healing and strength. Most importantly, help them to know that you uphold them with your everlasting arms. We also pray that you would, again, give just that added measure of health and strength to Winston and Todd, Alicia and Bob and Mary and all those who are recovering. Bring them fully back to health. Restore them fully for service to you in your kingdom. And finally, we pray that you would be with and comfort and strengthen Shirley and Betty and all who are under hospice care. Hold your cross before their closing eyes. Uh, help them to rest peacefully in your promise to them and the certainty that what you did and gave for them on that cross, what you did and gave on that cross really was for them and that you still have the power over life and death and you will see them through death to eternal life. Father, all these things and whatever else you know that we need, we ask that you grant to us. We commend ourselves and those that we love to your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, 
that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And thank you as always for joining us as we begin our day at the end of this week with God's word and prayer. Sanctified by that word of God in prayer, go joyfully to whatever work God may have for you. That's blessings on your day.